This is Peter Gajewski. Having served on the Rockville City Council for four years, I'm running for mayor to provide leadership in making responsible, reasoned, data-driven decisions that Rockville citizens expect from our elected officials. Rockville is at a crossroad, facing many challenges in order to preserve our way of life and our beautiful, distinct neighborhoods. We are working in many areas with the state, with Montgomery County, and with the county public schools in order to solve problems such as traffic congestion and school overcrowding. But in recent years, Rockville's relationships with these entities have not been well tended. I will work to rebuild our relationships so that Rockville again has a seat at the table to better chart our destiny. Over the past two years, our current mayor has let us down. Well, Phyllis Marcuccio, from whom you'll hear next, is a great cheerleader for Rockville. She has not been effective in providing the needed leadership to advance Rockville's interests. If you do not follow City Hall closely, you may be surprised that Mayor Marcuccio frequently votes against the financing of infrastructure improvements, including Rockville's critical water pipe replacement program and the new police headquarters. Now, the good news is that she has not prevailed in stopping these projects, so they are moving forward. But if Rockville were to stop its water pipe replacement program, the aging pipes would burst with increasing frequency, leading to costly repairs and water service interruptions. Opposing much needed infrastructure is not sound leadership. Mayor Marcuccio also recently voted against the deal to bring Choice Hotel's headquarters to Rockville. The deal will bring nearly 500 jobs to our city with Choice Hotel's employees working in town center and providing a much needed boost for our downtown businesses. Fortunately, the mayor did not prevail in her opposition to this deal as she was the only member of the council to vote against it. But opposing beneficial economic development is not sound leadership. Meanwhile, Mayor Marcuccio supports a $630,000 annual subsidy for Rockville's failing golf course, Redgate. This even in light of the fact that there's another public course owned by Montgomery County, the Needwood Golf Course, just a stone's throw away from Redgate. Rockville needs to collaborate with Montgomery County, not compete with it or duplicate services. After all, we are all serving the same constituents. Failing to work together with the county is not sound leadership. Finally, Mayor Marcuccio recently joined me at the 11th hour in voting against our city budget as it unnecessarily raised taxes. While I welcomed her turnaround recognizing the city's need to curb spending, just a week earlier, the mayor voted to recommend that the budget with a big tax increase move forward to a final vote. In other words, the mayor used the old U.S. Congress trick of voting for it before she voted against it. Such antics should have no room in our Rockville city government, and it is not sound leadership. Rockville needs a government where the elected officials clearly articulate a vision and then provide leadership and votes to move in that direction. If elected mayor, I will provide that leadership. I will work to rebuild Rockville's relationships with the state, Montgomery County, and county public schools so that together we can forge solutions that benefit our city and the region. I ask for your vote on November 8th. Hello, I'm Phyllis Marcuccio. On November 8th, I am asking you to re-elect me as your mayor. I love this city, my hometown where I've lived since 1942, graduated from Richard Montgomery and live in the house my father built. As a council member since 2005 and over the last two years as your mayor, I have carried your voice into every government chamber. I have fought for reductions in the tax rate annually and opposed increases in fees for city services. I voted against the 2012 budget because it was balanced on the backs of our residents, burdening the citizens with higher fees. My work with the Maryland Municipal League helped restore to Rockville over $700,000 in highway user funds. I have fostered good working relationships with the county, the state, federal, and local school officials. 
I instituted task forces on communications and budget and finance, whose results have increased transparency, accountability, and citizen input in our city government. We established a youth commission this year. I have consistently defended the Citizens Forum so that you have a voice that can be heard at every council meeting. Agendas are now posted well in advance for citizen review with supporting data. I have constantly voted to keep our adequate public facilities ordinance strong, to protect our city from school overcrowding and traffic congestion. And I continue to ask the questions that you would ask if you were in my place. You know that I stand for honesty, integrity, and openness. My record shows that I fight for citizens' interests and constantly strive to foster stability, common sense, and good city governance. But much remains to be done. We must still achieve greater clarity and transparency in the city's finances and budget process. We must do more to involve citizens in decision making, especially regarding issues that impact our neighborhoods. And we must conceive a management growth plan for our future, which values our city's strengths as we revise our master plan to accommodate Rockville Pike, our metro stops, and economic development. If you reelect me as your mayor, I will continue to protect our quality of life and our, <coughs> excuse me, lead our city safely through these challenging economic times. I shall strengthen and respect our neighborhoods and keep them safe. I shall challenge the necessity for all new fees and or taxes proposed on residents. I shall work to keep our infrastructure in excellent repair while li living within our means. I shall protect the remaining green space and prevent the city from selling or leasing any of our parkland without a citizen referendum. I shall foster a climate where the city is supportive of small business and vice versa. And finally, I shall make sure that we do not forget our seniors and those who are on fixed incomes. A few words about me. I bring to this job a wealth of expertise over 30 years of executive management experience in education, publishing, and science. I hold degrees from Bucknell and George Washington Universities. I'm a member of the National Pro Press Club and have been listed in Who's Who since 1976. The city of Rockville is my priority. And if re-elected, I will continue to serve you as your full-time mayor. We still have a lot to work to do and I am eager to continue this work with a new, more collaborative council. Please vote for, to reelect me as your mayor November 8th, and I shall lead a council that works for you. Hello, my name is Les Francis, and I'm running for a seat on the Rockville City Council. This is my first run for public office. During a household cleanup effort, I came across a file marked assessments and tax bills. As these items had been sent to me annually, I would casually throw them in a folder and forget about them. This time, the accountant side of me took over. I scanned the paperwork and decided to take a closer look at what the taxpayer situation was in the city of Rockville relative to my personal residence. By the time I'd completed my analysis, I was shocked. During the 10 year period from 1990 to 1999, my residential property tax had gone up a total of 36% for an average of 3.6% per year, a seemingly reasonable amount close to the annual inflation rate. The 10-year period from 2000 to 2009 was the real shocker. The total city property tax leveled against my personal residence increased 147.5% over that 10-year period for an average tax increase of almost 15% per year. I came to realize that the city of Rockville leaders had quietly increased my annual tax on my property 15% without me realizing it. They had always used the line, there will be no tax rate increase again this year, while being fully aware that real property values had increased dramatically, resulting in these types of huge increased tax burdens on Rockville residents. So I asked myself the question, where did all this additional tax revenue go? To get an answer to this question, I set out to analyze the operating budgets of six to eight municipal governments in the D.C. metro area, from Fredericksburg, Virginia to Frederick, Maryland, and compare them to the city of Rockville budget. What I found was once again shocking to me. 
It can best be summed up in the words of a study conducted by the National Golf Foundation when asked to take a look at the troubled Redgate Golf Course operated by the city of Rockville. The consultant's report stated that the city has one of the highest overall expense structures he had ever seen in his more than 20 years of budget analysis. The entire Rockville city government appears to need a right-sizing from top to bottom in order to be able to operate at a fiscally responsible level. Many city administrative departments operate at a staffing level 30 to 40 percent above those of similar sized municipalities. Wasteful spending on consultants like the $500,000 poorly advised expenditure to study the Rockville Pike need to stop. Then there's the $75,000 expenditure to unnecessarily create a new city logo and tagline called branding. Spending like this must be stopped. There is a need to recognize that the failing Redgate Golf Course should no longer be subsidized annually with more than $700,000 of taxpayer dollars. The loss of $900,000 of tax revenue from a single source due to lack of proper fiscal oversight cannot be tolerated. How many other lost tax revenue situations exist? For more than a decade now, Rockville city leaders have pursued a policy of tax, borrow, and spend. This must cease. If I am elected to the Rockville City Council, I pledge that I will return fiscal responsibility to city government operations. I will work diligently to reduce the city operating budget and related taxes by a factor of 10 to 20 percent in each of my two years in office. The elected leaders of the city of Rockville seem to have forgotten that there are large numbers of people who are not able to deal with the constantly increasing tax burden imposed on them by elected officials of the city of Rockville. My run for city council is an effort to give people like this a voice. I ask that come November 8th, you cast a vote for less taxes, less government, and less Francis for city council. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Richard Gottfried, and I am asking for your vote on November 8th. As a citizen activist, I serve as the Twinbrook Citizens Association Treasurer, providing financial analysis and interpretation, pro bono tax seminars, and tax services for seniors. I headed the home-based business action team that produced changes in our zoning code to help small businesses. In city council meetings, I voiced my concerns numerous times about the financial drain on our revenues caused by the parking garages in town center. I was an early defender of Rockville Advocate Public Facilities Ordinance from attempts to weaken it during the Twinbrook Neighborhood Plan process and the zoning rewrite. I'm a certified public accountant, small business owner, and a professor of accounting with service as a controller and director of finance. My extensive financial expertise will provide you with a strong advocate at City Hall to make sound financial decisions. Every city election brings unique challenges and tests our abilities as a community to preserve our character and our vibrant neighborhoods. The challenges we are facing, including preserving our adequate public facilities ordinance. Without a strong public facilities ordinance, we face runaway high density development that could result in traffic congestion, overburdened public services, and overcrowded schools. We need to recognize that we cannot solve school overcrowding with unlimited portable classrooms at our city schools. Our long range planning process needs to be brought back to reality. We all recognize the continuing need for improvements to our main shopping district on the Rockville Pike. However, the proposed Rockville Pike Plan is questionable as it creates more traffic while pushing out our diverse retail community, including many small local businesses, with taxpayers footing the bill for much of the infrastructure costs. Intelligent and realistic plans for future growth should respect the needs of our residents and serve our neighborhoods instead of serving only private interests. The current retail community provides an abundance of shopping choices. Do you really want to drive miles and miles to get the basic services or affordable shopping? We need to commit to preserving and improving Rockville's parks and green spaces for our residents. We have beautiful parks and recreational facilities that need the full support of your city council to survive and thrive. Taxpayers should be used to fund services to residents and not subsidize development. Remember, it's your money that came from your pocket as taxes and fees. It is critical that the council you elect provide responsible fiscal management of your community resources. And finally, I am committed to promoting open and responsive government that encourages and values citizen input. I will always work 
for Rockville's best assets, our livable, affordable, and historic neighborhoods. And I will support your issues in your neighborhood. Elected officials must be accountable to citizens. I'm asking for your vote and support to bring the focus of our Rockville government back to you. Let's work together to make Rockville a place where the citizens are respected and their needs are addressed first. I will be honored by your vote on November 8th. Thank you. My name is Richard Gottfried, candidate for Rockville City Council. You can visit my campaign website at www.gottfriedforcouncil.org or call me at 301-762-5182. Vote Gottfried for good government. Hi, I'm John Hall and I'm a candidate for the Rockville City Council. Several years ago, it was my honor to serve as your council member and to lead the city of Rockville in the adoption of many progressive laws and policies, including the Adequate Public Facilities Ordinance. The APFO gave us a critical tool to manage growth and ensure that development complements our community and doesn't overburden our schools and infrastructure. I also authored landmark legislation to protect the lives of Rockville's residents by requiring automatic fire suppression devices in all new residential construction. I championed over 100 new pedestrian safety features on our streets, supported limits on the expansion of institutional uses in neighborhoods, and helped to realize the vision of our town center. I also led the City Council in requiring that all City Council and Planning Commission meetings be televised to ensure that our city government remains open, honest, and responsive. I kept my promises then to protect our families, neighborhoods, historic properties, and businesses, and I'm committed to keeping my promises now. We are now facing the most intense fiscal pressures that many of us can recall, but this is not a time for despair. Rockville is an economic engine for the county, the state, and the region, and I will work hard to enhance our position and relationships with those entities and to constrain the growth of city expenditures. I will also work to sustain those key city services and amenities that make Rockville unique and a wonderful place to live and work, even in this challenging budget climate. As you know, the current city council abolished the homeowner's tax rebate, which effectively increased property taxes, especially impacting those who can least afford to pay. I am committed to restoring the rebate, and I will hold the line on property taxes. We can bring the budget into better alignment with our values and principles of fiscal responsibility without increasing anyone's tax rate, but simply by reducing turnover and vacancies and supporting a broader commercial tax base. There should be a greater balance between residential and commercial revenues in order to provide a buffer when the residential market tanks or when the commercial market is sluggish. Current budget figures, however, show that residents are carrying almost 70 percent of the load, and that's simply too much. A community as special as ours requires effective, proven leadership. When you demand excellence, you're more likely to get excellence, and excellence is what we expect of our city leaders and city government. We expect results, integrity, and responsiveness from our city government. I will work to embody those core values and to restore civility and cooperation to the Council. I will help to return our focus to thinking strategically about meeting the challenges of today and those of tomorrow, and to fostering real opportunities for the future. We need to bring Rockville stakeholders together to craft that vision for Rockville's future and then get about the business of realizing it. The future of Rockville is one that we should make happen and not something that simply happens to us. I thank you for listening and I ask for your vote for John Hall for the City Council on November 8th. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tom Moore and I'm running to bring strong, independent leadership to Rockville City Council. I've already knocked on the doors of more than a thousand Rockville voters and I hope to visit many more before Election Day. What I'm hearing from my neighbors is that they are concerned about the city's budget, about the city's rules on development, and about the general tone coming from City Hall. These are concerns I share. Here's what I'm going to do about them if you elect me to the Council. On the budget, we've had a few rough years and we're going to have a few more. Budgeting is all about making choices, and I will make the hard choices that protect essential city services and taxpayers' dollars in a sensible, tough, but fair manner. I'll give you an example. One issue that calls for a sensible, tough, but fair decision is the city's Redgate Golf Course. It is losing far too much taxpayer money on its present path. After studying the consultant's report, I can't say I believe it will get much better, even when the economy improves. I'm hopeful that the offers to run the course privately will work out, but if they don't, 
I will make the tough call to close Redgate. Now, the choice is not between having a golf course and building condominiums. That's a false choice. If we decide to close the golf course, I will fight to keep that area green permanently. There are good legal tools to make this happen, and they work. I've heard a lot of talk about how Rockville's budget is too complicated, how the staff can't explain it and the council can't understand it, and that we need one more committee to tackle it. I believe there's a better approach. I've talked to the city's budget staff, and I understand what they're saying to me. They are skilled and dedicated professionals, and they communicate well. If the council doesn't understand the budget staff, we don't need a new budget staff. We need a new council. On development, do we want sufficient water, sewer, firefighting, and schools capacity throughout our city? Of course. Do we also want to make sure that we have good, affordable, safe, and convenient housing in Rockville? Yes, we do. These goals do not have to clash. Rockville has a relatively new law called the APFO that is trying to balance the city's development concerns. We've been trying out this law for six years now, and it's time to take a look at the standards behind it to make sure it is serving all the city's goals well. This next council may also have a say in the future of Rockville Pike and in what the next phase of town center will look like. As one of the citizen leaders of the effort to build the library, the cornerstone of town center's first phase, I'm deeply excited about this opportunity to guide the city's future. I've also heard a lot of concerns about the infighting coming from City Hall. I can't promise to end all of that. All I can do is my part to be civil and to remember that civility is not a sign of weakness. I can disagree without being disagreeable. As part of my commitment to improve the tone of the next mayor and council, I'm staying independent in this election. I've met with both Mayor Marcuccio and Councilmember Gajewski. They know where I stand, and I believe I can work well with either one of them if I am chosen to serve. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and what I've done to prepare myself for the council. I'm a 14-year resident of Rockville. I'm chairman of the Rockville Compensation Commission. I serve on the executive committee of Peerless Rockville's board of directors. I served two terms on the Rockville Traffic and Transportation Commission. I led the citizen effort to get the Rockville Memorial Library fully funded and built on time. I served on the Town Center Action Team and on the board of the West End Citizens Association. I saved lives in Rockville driving an ambulance with the Rockville Volunteer Fire Department. Grew up in Montgomery County, went to Churchill, graduated with high honors from Georgetown's Law School. With my lovely wife Amy, I'm raising six kids, Alexander, Elsa, and Zoe at Bell Elementary, Ellie at Barnsley Elementary, Joey at Julius West, and Katie at Richard Montgomery. No one in this race has more of an interest in the conditions of our public schools than I do. I'm Tom Moore, and I'm running to bring strong, independent leadership to Rockville City Council. I ask you for your support and your vote on November 8th. Thank you. Hi, I'm Bridget Newton, and I'm running for re-election to our City Council. I would like to share with you some thoughts on the past two years, as well as a few comments about our future. While campaigning in 2009, I saw the energy and interest of Rockville's youth and thought we should bring them on board, as they are truly stakeholders in Rockville's future. We created a youth commission, and this group has met monthly and is providing Rockville with renewed energy and activism. I proposed a budget commission, however, it was only made into a task force. If you follow the budget process, you know that frequently, department budgets are presented at 10 p.m. Consequently, we do not have the time to drill down into the details. Forming a budget commission would not abdicate the mayor and council's responsibility, quite the opposite. It would enhance our vetting process and ensure that our tax dollars are spent wisely. A budget commission might have discovered that we exceeded our self-imposed debt per capita limit. They might have proposals to help us with our severely underfunded, underfunded retirement plans and our water and sewer funds that are in the red. As a taxpayer who has lived in Rockville for 30 years, I appreciate the services and amenities we have that distinguish Rockville from other jurisdictions. However, I want to ensure that we are getting value for our tax dollars, and in this economic climate, the more eyes on the bottom line, the more different perspectives brought to the decision-making process, the better the final result will be. I chaired the communications task force and this group of dedicated citizens came up with a myriad of suggestions for Rockville Reports, the website, and Channel 11. We will see more communication from the Mayor and Council and more opportunities for dialogue with city residents and community stakeholders. Development Review Subcommittee recommendations will require earlier neighborhood notification and will bring citizens into the development process from the beginning. These three bodies, which I hope will become full commissions, have made enormous improvements in the way we communicate and interact with our citizens. 
the reality is Rockville is best when we remember that we are a citizen-driven city. I am eagerly awaiting the opening of Dawson's Market. I look forward to visionary discussions of Phase 2, the area north of Bell where the vacant giant has sat for years. Maybe this is a place for a village green with a pavilion that could host concerts and various forms of entertainment. We still need a hardware store in East Rockville or Town Center. And I look forward to the completion of the Senior Center renovations. I will continue to advocate for support for our seniors, whether it's for a bus driver or program resources. I will continue to be a strong voice for the citizens of King Farm to ensure that the CCT does not divide the neighborhood. And I will always support our community policing approach to ensure that all of our neighborhoods, from Twinbrook to Falls Mead, remain safe. With the resignation of our current city manager, we are beginning the search process. I want to ensure that we select a manager who has the background and experience that it takes to run this city. A manager who is a visionary and a leader who works daily with the mayor and council, whom you have elected. We have big challenges ahead. We will need to shape the Rockville Pike Plan and vigorously defend our APFO. We will need to find a way to allow good development while at the same time protecting our greatest assets, our sense of community, and our neighborhoods. We will need to have serious and honest conversations about Rockville's budget and debt load. And we will need to continue our efforts to foster better communication and relationships with other government entities. I would like to be part of this effort to be given a chance to finish the proposals and projects I have worked so hard on, and to guide us on not only the known, but the unknown challenges facing Rockville in the future. I am asking for your vote on November 8th. Thank you for your consideration. Hello, my name is Virginia Onley. I've lived in Rockville for 18 years. Rockville was originally going to be a temporary home for me, but after living here a year, I felt such a part of the community I witnessed elected officials and citizens working together and making Rockville one of the best places in the state of Maryland to live and work. I decided then to make Rockville my home. For the most part, I've been very happy with the way Rockville has grown and progressed. But at times I see us wandering a bit off the trail of cooperation, of civility, and of sound decision making based on the needs of the community. I'm running for Rockville Council to help us get back on track and maintain our pride in our city and our government. Let me tell you what I bring to the table and about some of my thoughts about Rockville's best interest. My parents taught me to always look folks in the eye, whether speaking or listening, and to treat people with respect whether you agree with them or not. My 35 years at IBM and my leadership experience on the Americana Homeowners Board and on numerous Rockville boards and commissions has taught me that there is nothing more important than these values. I know how to lead productive civil meetings, I understand the importance of listening, and I know the value of respect and decorum. I am direct but polite. I firmly reject the politics of backstabbing and disrespect, not in my city. My experience serving over 18 years on eight boards and commissions and my decades of dedicated work at a blue chip company has also prepared me to understand budgets and to make informed common sense decisions, not for my benefit or the benefit of my friends, but for the benefit of the majority. For example, I supported the decision for once a week trash pickup. This made sense fiscally and environmentally. I understand that some folks felt inconvenienced, but this inconvenience did not outweigh sound fiscal and environmental management. Another issue that confronts us now is the fate of the Red Gate Golf Course. I think it's great that Rockville has a golf course and I hope that we can continue to have it, but I don't support using Rockville taxpayer dollars to support the Red Gate deficit. I will only support Red Gate if we are able to come up with a viable plan for Redgate to survive as a financially independent golf course. I feel hopeful that there are things we can do to get Redgate back on track. If not, I assure you that I will not vote for this land to become another development. I believe the land must be preserved as a recreational space for family use. I am hopeful it will not come to these types of decisions. As you can see, I try to be candid and not shy away from direct responses or tough issues. You can count on that. Another thing you can count on is my independence. I am not controlled by any group, party, 
specific community mission, nor am I part of any candidate slate. I value my independence because in the end, being tied to any special interest group or candidate arrangement affects my ability to lead and make decisions on behalf of the citizens of Rockville. Finally, I value citizen access. You talk, I'll listen. Let's talk about parking in town center, adequate school facilities, and most important, let's talk about your neighborhood because we're in this together. Rockville works best when all neighborhoods are thriving. I invite you to get on board the conversation. Talk to me, I'm listening. To learn more about me, please visit my website, VoteVirginiaOnly.org. And on November 8th, please cast your vote for me, Virginia Onley. Thank you for listening. My name is Mark Prashela, and I am running for re-election to Rockville City Council. I had a strong first term as council member, but my work is not done. National, state, and county budget cuts and a prolonged recession give Rockville extraordinary challenges. We must position ourselves to weather a long, harsh storm. Our budget choices define our prospects. I tried to cut Redgate golf subsidies but was stymied. There are 15 other public golf courses within 15 miles of Rockville. If we subsidize Redgate, we will needlessly cut other programs. City staff are bashed because they tell us we must make choices. Political leadership must accept the message. Citizens, your council, neighborhood associations, nonprofits, businesses, our other governments, and city staff must work together to get through the storm. I motivated several improvements to the zoning ordinance to defend our neighborhoods, led the finance and budget task force that improved the budget making process, formulated improvements to the development review process, proposed a study of economic competitiveness, planned the Rockville Summit on our economic future, approved city staff proposals to cut costs, worked with federal agency to improve town center arrangements, and voted for the Choice Hotels International Headquarters relocation to Rockville. I serve on the city's retirement board and work hard to overcome the damage caused by the 2008 economic collapse. The adequate public facilities ordinance needs revisions. Its current form is detrimental to you. We almost lost some development sovereignty over it. Our approval and permitting processes must be streamlined to attract businesses that can share our tax burden. Government salaries are an economic pillar. But as they decline, we must replace them with private jobs. We can maintain the city's prosperity, but only through smart decisions. On any issue I respect, I listen, I ask many tough questions, I analyze, I find common ground, I communicate and I lead. This is my style and it has worked for me on your council and in my professional life. I separate the person from the position. I understand that we all have a passion for Rockville. Rockville is changing and our city needs to change. We need to manage change, not deny it or try to stop it. I take clear positions, as you can see, by visiting my website at votepershela.org. Courage, openness, and diplomacy are required to deal with difficult issues. Thank you for, very much for listening, and I urge you to get out and vote for me on November 8. Hi. I'm Deion Trahan, and I'm running for Rockville City Council. You want your city back. That is the resounding single most important lesson we have learned from you as we walk through your neighborhood. While we took to the streets to learn from you, to see Rockville through your eyes, we have come to believe that our spirit as a city, a community, is no longer dormant. The reverberation that we felt several weeks ago was not the earthquake, no. I like to think that it was a phenomenon of our collective heartbeats that were in sync for that split moment in time. And now it's let loose, and it refuses to be silenced. So now it's my turn to ask you a question. Come this November 8th, how far are you willing to go get your city back? We offer you an alternative. Our city crest is founded upon a rock. That didn't happen by happenstance, and or no mistake. And neither did our campaign. My platform is simple. I'm asking you to let me be your rock. Rock stands for responsible governing, outreach, civility, know your neighborhood. Responsible governing means doing what is best for our city. This would not be done with a single up or down vote. This would be done by relying on our collective strength and encountering the tough future decisions we'll have to make together because together we'll all be affected. I believe and understand that we are not an island to ourselves, nor should we continue to exist as one, is key. Amongst the jewels that together make up the county, we are the crown jewel. And it is our time, our representatives government, understand that you are the glue that holds it in place. Responsible governing.
Outreach means hearing you not only when it's convenient, but listening and acting as if we had all along. When a citizen survey is taken and you vote a certain choice, we need to see that choice through. Substituting the government's whims in place of your wants is here and with me. If elected, I ask you to invite me to your HOA, Civic Association, and community meetings, not just during election year, but the entire year. Outreach. Civility, enough said. When the interest of our city takes a backseat to politics for the sake of the sport alone, we have lost our way. With you as the captain of our ship, help me fix the council's course so that it's straight and true. Civility. Know your neighborhood. Our solidarity will forever be our collective strength. The moment we start to believe our neighbors' problems in other neighborhoods do not impact us, we have lost. We have lost that belief that together we are stronger than as individuals. This election, let's be bold. Let's look to the future. In my 31 years of existence, there are a few certain truths I know. One is that the call to service is not come at an opportune time, nor is it predicated on how long you stay in one place. Rather, it is how intensely you love something and to what lengths are you willing to go to protect it. I have served my country honorably in uniform during a time of war in the Army as an officer. I have served my government on Capitol Hill in various leadership offices and on a committee, and I continue to serve my city as your planning commissioner. Let's respect our history by honoring and protecting it. Our city's not for sale, nor should it be put on the auction block. Let's preserve our future by rightfully taking our place in center stage throughout the county and state. Not through discourse, but through our focused, progressive, and clear vision of who we are as a city and what we want to stand for. Let's protect our city, our heart. Help me preserve what we have come to love and call our own. The future is here, let's seize it. Now I've heard you loud and clear. You want your city back. Now hear me. On this November 8th, how far are you willing to go to get it back? Help me get our city back. Vote Trahan for Rockville City Council.